Good morning all. Today I want to do a tear down or a strip down of this Power Oak uh, power generator PS5B I believe it is. Um, it's just a box full of lithium ion batteries and it's got a couple of uh, UK AC outlets 230 or 240 volts. It's also got some DC outlets USB. Uh, these are 12 volt coming straight from the battery although they go through a disconnector if the battery gets low and this is I think 12.6 volts but boosted or bucked in fact there probably is a buck boost in there uh, from the battery pack in order to keep this at a constant 12.6 I think it was let's switch this on and you can see that it is completely fully charged We've got three watt meters they're not reading any readings but today's not really about how this thing works it's about taking it apart and so what i've got to do is get to the screws now they are under these press fit caps and i was thinking about how do i get these out and my th first thought was a knife but the trouble is it's very difficult to get the knife under them and it was making a bit of a mess of them so in the end I decided to drill a small hole and put a little screw in there and lift them out with a screw so I'm going to drill all these now and then try and get the top off which is this black section now on the bottom it's um, well similar there are two covered screws there but there are also these rubber feet and my experience of peeling these off is that then they never stick again after that so what i thought i'd do and i've done it on one of them where is it yeah this one and in fact it's barely visible i've cut i press this in to feel where the indentation is the hole and then i cut across with a knife and i can poke a screwdriver in there and remove the screw so maybe i'll maybe i'll do the bottom because it is a smaller plate and we'll get to see the battery first. Yeah, maybe I'll start on the bottom of this unit. So let's start by drilling these two plastic cap covers. Oops, I think the screw head is quite close to the surface under there. Okay, they're done. Let's get the screw in. Uh, what did I do with that? That's there. And then I should be able to Poik these out. Oh yeah, they come out easily. And yeah, the screw is really quite near the surface there. Anyway, I should better get all those out. I've got to cut the uh, crosses on these as well. Actually, let's do that on one of them. Let's try this one up here. So if I just press on there, I can get an idea of where the hole is. I just get a sort of indentation. And then I'll put the knife in there and cut across. And I just feel that's a better idea because this rubber's kind of self-healing to a certain degree. And uh, so if I poke a screwdriver in there and ah, uh, oh, it's tight. Okay, the answer is big screwdriver to loosen it. And then small screwdriver to undo it without putting too much stress on this rubber feet foot. Right, I'll get all those done. Now I was just wondering whether these screw cap covers are available in various different sizes so that I can replace them with nice undrilled ones. I might have a look on eBay for that. So I just love these power generators they call them it's a power bank really a big one and i'm tempted to make one myself using the lithium ion batteries that i've got because the one downside of these units is that you can't see a lot what's going on particularly in regard of balancing um, i just don't know how well the cells in this thing are being balanced so if i built my own i could put those active balancers on and you can see the little LEDs light up on those things. I mean, it wouldn't be a neat front panel arrangement, but you would at least be able to see the balancing taking place. And we're off. Oh, yes. 
There it is. Okay, well there's the battery pack and there's some electronics. Let's have a closer look. Right, the battery pack appears to be on some sort of, well it's almost like a printed circuit board. It's a Paxilin SRBP type uh, board and that slides up and out of the unit and the electronic circuit board, I've switched it off so there's no mains in here, that also slides up but of course um, none of this stuff moves so there's going to be lots of connections there so I'm just wondering actually whether I put the bottom back on and take the top off and see what that looks like. So if I just put the two middle screws in that will hold the bottom on and then I'll have to drill out all the top um, screw covers. I've done that with one of them, where's the other screw there it is, but I'll drill them all, take them all out, because they don't look too bad with a little drilled hole, they look quite neat. Yeah, they come out easily with the this little screw screwed into them. I've only got the one at the moment, but uh, screw that in there, and then it just lifts out nice and easy. And then I can start undoing these. These are quite deep down. Oh, actually, yeah, the screwdriver doesn't reach. This screwdriver does reach and I can feel that this is completely loose but there are lots of wires going to it so I think I might lay it down to try and see what's going to have to be disconnected oh actually that's all sliding out uh, okay I'll do this in such a way that big electrical stuff doesn't short on other big electrical stuff well probably the best thing to do you can see there there's a big now what's that called it's not an XT90 is it because the XT's are the little yellow ones EC3 is it something like that someone corrected me recently on that so let's try and undo that so that's isolated the battery from the electronics and so now I can take it all apart now there's another connector here and I'm just wondering if that's some sort of sensor, maybe that's temperature. Is this a two pin connector? I can't uh, get to it very easily. Or is it just a, oh no, it's just a single connection. So what would that be? I suppose it could be temperature um, sensor and the voltage relative to ground on here. That could work. I've got a feeling that's everything off the battery. So there's, all the balancing must be built into the battery pack. Let's see if it'll lift out. Right, I've had to open the bottom again because on the electronics board there's this connector here with four black wires and that runs into the battery pack so my guess is that's the balancing and although that's gunked on I've waggled it and the gunk has broken and so that hopefully will allow me to withdraw the battery pack. Now actually it should pull out bottom wires yes there we are okay we'll take a look at that and I can't tell immediately whether that's cylindrical cells yeah just not sure what that is temperature must be or whether this is uh, flat pouch cells but that balance lead runs over to a board on the side here so yeah this is some sort of BMS would be my guess now, as I remember it, this is a three cell or a 3S pack. Um, I think it said how many there are in P, but I can't remember the parallel arrangement. This could be um, 18650s. Yeah, it's quite heavy, so it could be cylindrical cells. Uh, so this must be most negative point. There are three red wires, which must be positive cell one, positive cell two, positive cell three. Not sure quite what that is, which goes off to the electronics board, maybe there's some markings on there, we can identify what that is. So, the case should now slide off, so that's just 
a giant size extrusion. Now, is this a particular way round? Yes, it is actually. Um, so it looks like the displays are on the side with the chunky screw holes, not that one. Okay, I'll try and remember that. Right, we have, this looks like the inverter section here because we've got these big sort of mainsy type capacitors, class X possibly, or Y, or something like that. And um, the connections here, this red one and black is down there, go off to the mains outlet. So that's the inverter. Um, there's a microchip pick here, it's a DS pick. Um, and it has a four megahertz crystal. So I don't know whether this thing has internal PLL, phase lock loop to multiply that frequency up. It does seem rather slow, but then maybe it's not doing a lot very quickly. So perhaps that's okay, but that almost certainly does have um, a faster internal clock rate. I'm guessing, of course. Um, battery terminals are these massive thick wires. That of course is the battery connector. They then come off these blocks which are soldered onto the board through two more thick wires and go straight up to the connector here. Now that's for the car jump starter. So that's effectively direct off the battery pack and out to that connector. The solar input comes in on these two wires. So that comes down here. There's a 30 amp fuse there, a 30 amp fuse there. Um, this is an MPPT solar input so we've got inductors here which presumably has something to do with the solar charging uh can't see what chips are down here we've got some mosfets there are lots and lots of um either op amps or mosfets yeah i think one or two of them are mosfets but lots of op amps uh so yes i mean essentially it's an mppt solar charge controller in one half of this and uh, a mains to 30 to 40 volt inverter in the other half and if memory serves me right this is a 300 watt inverter so on this heat sink you can see lots of uh, mosfets diodes semiconductors of various types interesting they've got what looks like this paxilin stuff again i thought it might be flexible but it doesn't seem to be very flexible um, pushing down on the devices, they are insulated from the metalwork because they're probably all at different potentials. There's another massive row of them down there for the inverter. And down on the bottom corner, I'm not sure whether it's visible, I'd have to turn it around to the other side, but there's a little thermistor uh, mounted on this metalwork. And that's coming up to this two pin connector here. So it's monitoring the temperature of the heat sink now i'm not sure whether there were error codes for over temperature on the mppt as well as over temperature on the inverter oh you can just now see the little thermistor down there sitting in a little um crimp connector they seem to have uh, glued it into the metalwork of the crimp connector and then screwed that down onto the heatsink interesting the four pin connector that goes to the battery ends up there and on the board there are four transistors so is this the balancing circuit might be the ribbon cable connector here looks like it might be 20 or possibly 24 way uh, runs down to the display board uh, that also has buttons doesn't it yeah the three buttons for switching ac uh, and dc on and the unit on and I must say, these monochrome LCDs are so much easier to see in sunlight. And typically I use this outdoors, as you would. That's where you need the mains. Uh, no, that's not the main side. Um, yes, then the sort of blue and black display on the bigger unit that I was sent by Power Oak. Uh, this one is so much easier to see. Although I must admit, I find myself using the bigger unit more often than this unit. Because it's just got more storage now, I don't know whether you can see this, but just down in there, you can see a purple cylinder. And there are a few markings on it, or no, on this one here. I can't quite see what they are. But you can just make out, oh, S, A, oh yeah, that says 
Samsung. So yes, it has Samsung cylindrical cells, almost certainly 18650. They're in two layers. So ooh, what would this? So it would have two there and two there. So that's four times however many fit across here. Uh, eight-ish across there so maybe 32 cells in this block and just on the end here you can just make out in there another one of these sort of pinky purple cylindrical cells so yeah chock full of Samsung uh, 18650s that pack ah uh, yes I see how this works now that um, slot there and there actually takes the metal heat sink um, and then this thing you'd think, oh, well, that would get in the way, but no, that slides up one of these grooves. So let's try and slide this back on. So yes, that slides in there. Now if I leave just enough room to get in and make the connection to that connector, this connector, whatever that might be, and then at the bottom, I'll remake this four pin connector to what appear to be the balance leads on this pack. So let's get that slid in. I think I'll remake that single connector first. Uh, then I'll remake the balance lead connections down here. Oh, I can't tip it now. And finally the main power connector. Make sure red goes to red on that it might be an ec5 just can't quite remember the name is that, i think there's an ec3 and an ec5 if memory serves me right and then i need to slide the battery pattern oh, that's about right and the electronics board in i think i'll put the bottom on first uh before i put this lid back on i'll just see if i can power this thing up that's interesting, I've never seen the display do that before, but maybe it just went through some sort of boot sequence. Well, that seems all right. It seems to be saying that it's fully charged. So I just need to get that back down, sitting on there, put the screws in. Let's do it. So that's all back together. Let's just check the AC outlet with this 100 watt bulb. AC on. That takes a few seconds to ramp up, but yeah. That appears to be fine, and I assume the DC sockets are all working as well. What can I use to test those? Uh, let's turn the AC off. Um, yes, actually my phone here is being powered by a power bank. So if I flip this round and poke that in here and turn the DC on, then we should be able to charge this power bank and that's saying that it's charging this is oh oh that's doing a strobing effect with the camera that's saying it's on the top bar so it's virtually full and that's indicating four watts going to this four watts at five volts that's about one amp isn't it yeah just under so that was a little look inside the power oak um ps5b I think it's a 300 watt with, was it 450 watt um, for a short time inverter? And I believe this does up to 120 watts of MPPT uh, solar on the PV connector there. That's Anderson power pole. Uh, the car jump starter comes straight off the battery effectively. So that's as many amps as you want, really. Um, car adapter. Oh, that's right. That's for the... Oh, I think, yes, actually, you can plug that straight into a, a car lead acid system, probably when the generator's going, so that you've got enough voltage to charge the uh, cells inside here. Um, and kind of my desire to build something like this, um, so that I get more opportunity to look at things like balancing, and uh, you don't see voltages on here. You can measure them on these connectors, but it'd be nice to have more on the display so you know what's going on so that might become a long-term project but uh, for the moment cheerio